Today, quite excited, I finally got my hands on the one inch sensor for the Insta360 ONE R, the Leica co-engineered sensor, which I've been trying to get my hands on for quite a while now for a reasonable price. I'm just gonna review it based on what it's like in 2022 and the software updates that it's had late last year. So let's get into it. So if you don't know Leica, they make some amazing, amazing cameras, which I personally haven't had the experience to get hold of. I know the ever popular Leica Q2 uh, is a very good photography camera, a fixed lens, 28 mil, fixed aperture, 1.7, and it costs about five grand. So 48 megapixel, it's supposed to be absolutely amazing. So they have co-engineered, I don't know what input they've had into this sensor, but they've had some input. So that along with the one inch, which is unheard of in any other action camera even to this day even though this is about two years old uh, that's just incredible and quite exciting really so let's just talk about the headline specs you've obviously got the one inch sensor you've got f 3.2 so not super wide but the one inch sensor should cover you there 14.4 millimeter focal length equivalent to full frame and the rest is just your standard into 361r which you may already have so the one inch sensor uh, absolutely it looks fantastic shooting in manual shooting in a flat profile really great quality really great dynamic range um, you have to be careful because it's so wide at 14 mil it's a bit wider than any other the GoPros which are around 16 mil um, it does expose a little bit for the sky so just be careful of that but really really good footage out of it uh, low light is absolutely fantastic better than any other action camera because of that one inch sensor and you get really really good photos out of it you know, it's only 12 megapixel, but you know, you get really good photos out of it. Really good quality raw photos, which you can edit. You've got that one inch sensor, so you're capturing lots of detail. You can then crop, you can edit, you can do everything in post. For an action camera, this takes the best images by far. There's no other action camera that I've used that takes better stills than this guy. Now the one inch sensor received a little bit of a firmware update late last year, or the camera received an update, but it included the, the one inch module. Finally, you're able to use the quick mode rather than just pro mode. So you get some in-camera or in-body stabilization, which for me is critical because before that, the reason I didn't want to buy the lens is you have to put it through the Insta360 Studio software. Now I have done that myself just to see what it's like. And about a four minute clip at 5.3K takes about 10 minutes to stabilize and export. So if you've got, say, six clips, it's gonna take you an hour to export them out of the software. And I just think that I haven't got the time for and I can't be bothered. I just want a fully baked file, which I can take straight out of the camera, SD card in the laptop, start editing it. Now with the quick mode, we can do that, but we only get it up to 4K 50. So none of that, no 5.3, 30, up to 30 frames per second in quick mode. I presume that's maybe the sensor or the core, whatever, obviously can't do it. So we're limited to 4K 50, but I think that's great. I'm happy with that. You know, I can do my 4K 24, nice cinematic shots lovely footage and it's all stabilized for me as good as any other action camera with the flow state so i think that's fantastic and a real plus a real plus for the one inch lens in 2022 so i've shown you some little snippets of, of what the lens can do but i'm sure you want to see a little bit more so here's some photo and a couple of video examples of just what it can do
So there are some negatives, obviously. Um, first one being, I haven't got the cage on right now, but if you want to take this in and out of the cage, you have to take the lens cap off. It will not fit inside the cage with the cap on. Not hugely annoying, but it is something to bear in mind. It does annoy me. The 14.4 millimeter equivalents for me, like if you've seen my DJI. So the focal length for me is still too wide. If you've seen my DJI Action 2 review, that I think is about 12 point something mil, too wide. This is 14.4, again, too wide. GoPros, you get 16.4, and it looks like only two mil, but it is very, very noticeable in video. And that narrow field of view, I just prefer, you know, no matter what you're doing, I just think you don't need 16 mil, it's just too wide. So personal opinion, but a personal negative for me. I don't like the small screen. The small screen, it's laggy a little bit. It's small, it's outdated. You know, this is more a negative of the camera rather than the lens, but it doesn't show good colors either. You know, you can just about use it to frame up your shot and then I wouldn't use it again. You know, it's pretty pointless. But then the biggest negative of this lens is the 0.9 meter minimum focus distance. That is massive. For a lens that's so wide, it should not have a focal distance so long. To vlog with it, you've got to be like a meter away. So I've got their selfie stick, their invisible stick. That plus my forearm length is how far you have to be away. It's absolutely miles. So the in-camera audio is going to be terrible because you're so far away. It's not going to be any good for, say, POV shots on your chest, because if you're doing something here, maybe with a camera or something, you've got to have like go-go inspect gadget arms to get in focus. You know, it's, it's obviously not for that, and it's not for POV, and it's not really for vlogging, but it would have been nicer to have a distance that was closer. Yeah, it focuses probably at about 0.5, it's not too bad, but really it should even be closer than that. It should be the same as the 4K, it should be sort of 0.25, 0.3, at best. So I don't understand the reason, but it's definitely a negative. So who is this lens for? Well, for me, anyone who wants to do cinematics, photos, nice and slow, just slow panning movements, things like that, nice bit of stabilization, perfect for that. It looks great, it's great in low light, the quality is amazing, you get great photos out of it as well, perfect for that. Anyone doing sports or anything fast paced, mountain biking, etc. I would stick to the 4K mod that you can get for this. It's also a lot cheaper. And anyone who wants to vlog or do POV stuff, again, just stick with the 4K mod because of the focus distance. Um, this really isn't appropriate for, for that, in my opinion. It's just too far away. So as ever, guys, any questions, any comments, leave them down below. I'll happily answer them on this lens. Um, I think it's something that I enjoy, but was it worth the purchase? I'm not quite sure. Let me know down in the comments, guys. Do you own it? Are you thinking of buying one? What do you think of it? Are you going to keep it? Are you going to sell it? I would love to hear your thoughts. So as ever, smash that like button. Um, really helps out. I like to know that you guys enjoy what I'm creating. I'm enjoying doing it, but I like to know that you guys enjoy watching it. Uh, give the channel a subscription. Please subscribe. Um, we're getting there. We're slowly creeping up. We're slowly creeping up. Um, I would love for you to subscribe. That'd be great. And hopefully, after that subscription, I'll catch you in the next one.